Alright everyone, welcome back. My name is Pratesh here with Kaizen Crypto, bringing you another video. So I hope you guys are doing well. Thank you all so much for joining me here today. In this video, we're taking a look at what we can anticipate from Cardano coming in the month of September. Also, with the anticipation of the Gogan release coming up in the next few months, talking about what we can anticipate with some of these smart contracts and decentralized applications that will start to be built on Cardano. We're taking a look at an article talking about an introduction to tokenization. As far as the actual rollout of Gogan, this was presented at the Shelley Virtual Summit. This is the Gogan rollout plan, so it's a visual representation on what that process actually looks like. So I'm going to be sharing with you all some of my thoughts regarding that. And recently, Charles Hoskinson talking about Cardano's stablecoin. So as far as how that relates to when we do see Gogan get released on Cardano, how does Cardano actually capture some of the market share from Ethereum's DeFi with things like a Cardano stablecoin? Very interesting to see that. And lastly, if you all stay till the very end, I've got an idea presented from Cardano Dan on Twitter. So recently there has been blood in the streets. The entire cryptocurrency market has had quite a bit of a sell-off, taking a look at an idea on what we can potentially anticipate coming up with the price. So if you all are interested in that type of content, be sure to stay tuned. All right, everyone, thank you all so much for joining me here today. To get things started, if you guys do find some value from this video, be sure to drop a like for me. If you want to stay up to date with relevant Cardano news, information, and how-to videos, be sure to smash that subscribe button. More than 50% of our audience is not subscribed to our channel. Let's see if we can get up to 10,000 subscribers. And if you guys do have any questions or comments about anything that we're talking about today, be sure to let me know down in the comment section. So what we have in this article, this is from Crypto Slate. Recently, Charles Hoskinson gave an update on what we can potentially anticipate here coming up in the month of September. So we talked about quite a few different things, talking about one-to-many delegation. So this essentially would allow you to create a delegation portfolio, which you could include to select multiple stake pools, and you would be able to thus delegate to those stake pools, increasing your rewards and helping the smaller stake pools compete with better odds. I did actually mention this in an update video previously and talked about the delegation portfolio, kind of like a playlist to your favorite music. So you can actually categorize your favorite songs in a playlist similar to that like you would with the delegation portfolio. So I think it's gonna be really great to help out the smaller stake pools and just overall helping out the decentralization of Cardano. So really looking forward to that feature. He did also talk about a stake pool metadata aggregation server. So it's a smash server. I'm sure that many of you all have experienced issues with Daedalus not displaying all of the stake pool metadata. So something like a smash server would actually help with that issue. Right now, we're also seeing an issue with the rankings in Daedalus where a saturated pool, I know I'm seeing IOG pools up at the top of the rankings in Daedalus. So a smash server, essentially it's aggregating metadata from existing stake pools and providing an efficient way to fetch and store it in a semi-centralized environment. Smash could change the way users view stake pools. In the following months, Smash will evolve to be user-driven, which means that users will be able to create their own Smash servers with different parameters. So this is going to be awesome. They're going to implement this into Daedalus, so now you'll be able to see all the metadata that's relevant for a specific stake pool. We should see the categorization of these stake pools fixed with this implementation as well. So you'll be actually be able to sort through the different performance metrics of these stake pools to find out which one is going to be best to delegate to. Looking forward to that. That's pretty technical there, but uh, it's going to be very awesome to see that. It's going to be very beneficial for the end user. Also, Hoskinson talked about receiving a proposal from Vacuum Labs for Ledger and Trezor support. So he did let us know that they're pretty much in the works with that. He's actually got a contract written up and they're ready to go ahead and submit the proposal and it should be implemented soon. Also, KESS proxy keys, so key evolving signature proxy keys. In order to be able to update your key evolving signatures as a stake pool operator, having two separate environments for stake pool operators, a hot one and a cold one. The hot environment would run on servers, either those provided by Amazon's AWS or bare metal servers, and it would be connected to the chain. A cold environment, on the other hand, would be completely offline and provide stake pool operators a place to store keys and money. So recently we're seeing this become more and more relevant with uh, stake pool operators having issues with their pledges 
And now we're going to see the implementation of having to update your KESS keys as a state pool operator. So having an air-gapped environment where you're not connected to the internet, it's going to be very important for the security of the state pool operator. And he did also mention multi-signature pledging. So in line with being able to pledge your ADA to a pool using a hardware device, you would actually be able to also use multiple parties to commit to a pledge using multi-signature. So what this would allow for is, say, if there's a smaller pool that would maybe have less resources to commit to a pledge, multiple parties can actually get together without having to necessarily have that trust factor. They can actually use multi-sig in order to be able to pool their resources and thus improving their chances for success. So really nice. I think that is incredible. There's so many different developments that they're talking about. It's actually really hard to keep up with everything that's happening. He did also give some updates regarding staking as a service for exchanges. So IOHK is currently talking with Bison Trails, a New York-based blockchain infrastructure company that runs nodes on POS networks. So what this would allow for is increasing the adoption for somebody who wants to take part in proof of stake without necessarily having to manage their own keys. I think staking as a service is going to provide a huge source of liquidity for some of these top exchanges. And lastly, Charles went on to talk more about the launch of Gogan. So he's saying more information about Gogan will be released at the end of the month. And external companies have been brought on to deliver things for Voltaire and de-risk experimental improvements of the blockchain's governance era. So there are so many developments happening. As you all know, as far as the developments happening with Cardano, everything is happening simultaneously where they're working on Shelley, they're working on Gogan, Voltaire. All of these developments in the roadmap haven't been after you finish one, you complete that and you start on another, but rather they're working on them in tandem. So really incredible. I think the train is definitely building momentum. Really awesome to see all the developments happening that we can expect for the month of September. Now with the highly anticipated release of Gogan, what does this mean for being able to write smart contracts and issuing tokenized assets on the blockchain? So this is an article that was published on the Cardano forum. I will be sure to link to this down in the description if you guys do want to do a deep dive. I would recommend it. It's an incredible wealth of information talking about what is tokenization and how that's going to relate to Cardano when we actually see smart contracts being written on the protocol. So in layman's terms, they're saying tokenization takes an existing asset or function and represents it as a token, which is written and deployed on the blockchain. So this could be a real world asset like a stock or a bond, a crypto collectible or a utility token that's used using a dApp. Now you have two different blockchain based tokens. So you have fungible tokens and non-fungible tokens. As far as how they describe fungible tokens, so they give the example of saying Cardano's native token ADA is a fungible token. So each ADA is worth the same amount as the next. Similarly, staple coins are another example of fungible tokens. So one single DAI or one single USDC is the equivalent of value to another. Now the opposite of that would be something called a non-fungible token. So now with this, not every asset is of equal value, even if it is of the same type. So non-fungible tokens, often called NFTs, ensure that each token is unique with its own characteristics. And they give the example here of a piece of artwork. So say you have a painting from someone such as Van Gogh that's intrinsically more valuable than another type of amateur piece of art. So these important unique characteristics can be coded into an NFT to reflect these differences. So that's something to keep in mind as well. So not each non-fungible token is created equally. Now, as far as the different types of tokenized assets, so you have asset backed tokens. So these would be tokens issued on the blockchain that could be backed by something like a stock or a bond or a piece of debt or a piece of real estate. Uh, now these use cases for asset backed tokens are plenty such as simplifying share registries or enabling fast cross border transfers of value. So think about something that's pretty illiquid, right? Like if you were to want to uh, transfer value that was held in real estate by using an asset backed token, that's issued on the blockchain, you would have much more liquidity with such an illiquid asset. Next would be stable coins. So stable coins are exactly that. They are designed to hold a steady peg value. Stable coins have become particularly popular, especially with what we're seeing now with DeFi, having things such as DAI or USDC or Paxos or anything of the sort. Stable coins can be used in blockchain based funds to represent the net asset value of the fund. 
Next would be utility tokens. So they offer a simple and decentralized way to access applications built on the blockchain. So think about something that you would need to access a smart contract. So you would have some type of utility that's being brought into that smart contract by using that token. Most often, utility tokens are written and deployed using a token standard for a specific blockchain and serve the applications built atop that specific chain. So something that comes to my mind in this instance would be they're talking about an ERC token converter. So you have native assets on Ethereum with the ERC20 standard. I think it's really cool that we're actually even talking about an ERC20 converter because of all the things that we're seeing right now with Ethereum and these extremely high gas prices. So if you wanted to execute a smart contract using a utility token on the platform, you're paying extremely high fees. So Cardano, there's another area of opportunity there for the blockchain. So really incredible to see that. Now, what are the actual benefits of tokenization? So utilities and NFTs have served decentralized applications, bringing interesting new functionalities to blockchain. However, tokenizing of existing real world assets represents the most significant use case for blockchain based tokens. So according to a professional services firm, Deloitte, tokenized assets can offer greater transparency during transactions due to the immutable nature of the blockchain greater accessibility through 24 seven availability, faster processing and settlement times and increased liquidity. So in time, it's likely that trillions of dollars worth of assets could be brought into the blockchain ecosystem by virtue of tokenization. So we're not just talking about things that are specific to what's built on the blockchain. We're actually talking about real world items that could be tokenized and being brought into the blockchain ecosystem. So really interesting to see there. There's just incredible potential. It's actually kind of mind blowing to see all the possibilities. Now tokenizing on Cardano through Gogan. So Gogan will begin its rollout later this year, resulting in a steep change in the functionality of the Cardano blockchain. The most significant change will be the arrival of tokens and smart contracts, which will invite a diverse range of development talent into the Cardano ecosystem. The arrival of tokens on Cardano will come in the form of a multi-currency ledger, which will allow the deployment of tokens that represent real world assets, stable coins, NFTs, and more. To fully understand the magnitude of what Gogan means for Cardano, let's explore how custom tokens can be deployed. Now it talks about native custom tokens. So we were talking about earlier, Ethereum has native asset standards such as ERC20 and ERC721. So these tokens are termed native custom tokens because they are native to the Ethereum blockchain. Now Cardano is gonna have something very similar with its own native custom tokens. But what's very interesting about the native assets built on Cardano is that the custom tokens are created and deployed by the extended UTXO multi-asset framework. So now this is an evolution of the standard unspent transaction output model developed by engineers at IOHK. Through this model, native tokens can be forged and burnt on Cardano. The forging or burning of these tokens will allow a token creator to specify the finite supply of tokens through what is known as the forging policy. Forging also allows tokens to be traced back to their origin on the blockchain, useful for proving the validity and provenance of the asset. In simple terms, this means that to participate in a dApp, smart contract, or similar function, a user must present the relevant role token. So these role tokens can become tradable resources as we will explore below. They can be used to trade complex financial derivatives and contracts. Cardano custom tokens can also be used to hold initial coin offerings for those dApps being built on Cardano. Tokenized roles through EUTXOMA offer a fairer way to ensure each participant is involved at each stage of the ICO process. And it goes on to talk more about financial products and DeFi. This is very relevant, what we're seeing right now with Ethereum. DeFi is taking over as it comes to the value added on the network. Now, tokenized roles are assets in themselves, and as a result, they can be written into smart contracts and used to represent complex financial contracts, where relatively complex concepts such as yield and interest need to be written into a token's code. These parameters are difficult to represent through normal smart contracts, but instead they could be effectively represented through tokenized roles for each aspect of a financial contract. Now, as far as preparing for the rollout of Gogan, so Gogan's rollout will represent a paradigm shift in Cardano's functionality. 
opening the way to the development of enterprise-level, mission-critical decentralized smart contract applications and a wealth of tokenized assets. As far as how they are bringing this to developers, they will be powered with Plutus. So Plutus is a Haskell-based programming language that is going to be used to write these smart contract applications on Cardano. So an incredible amount of information held in this article here. I really do recommend you guys check it out if you're interested in learning more about native assets and tokenization on the Cardano blockchain. Moving on, I wanted to go ahead and just briefly touch on this here since we're talking about tokenization. This is CardanoKids.com. So big thank you to Cardano Buzz for introducing me. This is really cool to see. As far as NFTs, so we were talking about earlier, non-fungible tokens being implemented on the Cardano blockchain. So these are some of the unique collectibles that are going to be minted on the Cardano blockchain. Just taking a look, it's saying, think crypto kitties, but way cooler. These will celebrate the heroes of Cardano, the diverse community, and we will also take out the trash. So <laughs> I really like the website. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, they've got a lot of cool designs. The Mighty One, this one's pretty cool. We got Charles Hoskinson, the chadliest man in Cardano. We've got the Molten Tar Monster here. Uh, Wen Shelley, so really cool. I, I enjoy these designs and I'm sure they're gonna be bringing out quite a few more interesting concepts. So definitely check them out. It's cardanokids.com. Really nice to see that. As far as what we can anticipate with the rollout of Gogan. Now, Gogan is gonna be similar, in my opinion, to the rollout of Shelley. We actually got an idea of what that looks like during the Shelley Virtual Summit. For those of you who were able to join us for our live stream during the Shelley Virtual Summit, we went two days, nine hour days, live streaming the entire event. Thank you all so much if you were there to participate. It was a lot of fun. Uh, if you were there, I'm sure if you guys remember the um guy, <laughs> this is gonna be what he was talking about as far as the rollout of Gogan. So if you were there for the live stream, go ahead and let me know down in the comments. Do you guys remember the um guy? So what we have here, we're taking a look at the testnet release. Now, the testnet release is going to be here in Q3 of 2020. Basically, they're doing things, building for multi-assets. We're talking about stable coins. The rollout of Gogan has pretty much already started. What they're doing now is just making the tools available for these developers. So what we can anticipate with the testnet release, it's pretty much going to be coming up very soon in Q4 of 2020. I'm sure Charles Hoskinson is going to be talking about that more in greater detail at the end of the month. And then we're going to see the Gogan mainnet with a hard fork combinator on the actual network. And that's going to take place in Q4 of 2020. Now, this is still very tentative. Of course, you guys know with things like software, we've seen that this is not going to be expected on the day. There has to be some room with these types of deadlines. As far as software goes, and especially as it comes to building decentralized software, it's incredibly difficult. So the researchers at IOHK, you know, they're really gonna take their time to make sure that this is implemented correctly. But this is what we're looking at here. So we've got the tools available for developers using their advanced developer SDK. So we've got the Plutus application framework and Marlowe. Marlowe is gonna be the financial smart contract programming language. I did check that out. It's pretty cool. You guys wanna make sure you subscribe. That way you can stay tuned if you're interested in Marlowe. It's a really fun user interface. They've got a tool called Blockly. You can actually, it's almost like a puzzle actually. You can use these Blockly. It's predetermined sets of code. You don't even have to have programming experience. You can kind of fit these pieces of the puzzle together to write your own financial smart contracts. Really cool. I think that it's gonna be incredible for actually being able to see more than just developers write applications on Cardano. So excited about that. Lots to look forward to with the rollout of Gogan. I wanted to share some information also. Charles Hoskinson came out in one of his latest update videos talking about a stable coin. What we're seeing right now with DeFi, the need for being able to port some of these uh, decentralized applications over to Cardano is more prevalent now than ever. And he added that IOHK is researching some of the most popular DeFi things and some of it is already starting to leak out. Now, in one of my previous videos, I did talk about a recent partnership with Emergo and Ergo. So essentially what they're doing with that is they're gonna be working on the logistics of a stable coin. They're gonna first be building on Ergo to verify that everything works correctly. And this will then be pulled over onto Cardano. 
So this is going to be something that is highly anticipated. It's going to provide tremendous value and utility to Cardano. And consider also that by the time this gets implemented, we'll have all these smart contracts that are available. Having some type of stablecoin on Cardano, it's really going to help to capture some of that market share from Ethereum with the DeFi space. So let me know what you guys think about that. Do you feel like Cardano has a solid chance of being able to capture some of that market share? Let me know down in the comments section. And lastly, if you all did stick around till the very end, thank you all so much for watching. I know lots of information here in this video. Hopefully you did enjoy it. This is gonna be an idea from Cardano Dan. So Cardano Dan doing his strat sat number three. This is taking a look at the price chart here for ADA USD. Now there is blood in the streets. The entire crypto market has been experiencing quite a bit of a dip. Um, at the time of him posting this chart, Cardano was testing support at the 0.5 Fibonacci level, as well as a 200 day EMA at around about 9 cents. We have since broken that support, and I think that the next confluent level of support that we will see is right back down here, right at this 618 Fib retracement level at about 7.5 cents. So the price of Cardano could definitely go lower. Now, as far as what we're looking at on the RSI, we're just about to dip down into oversold territory. So definitely do be prepared for more downside. I think that's something that we're all kind of anticipating right now. Of course, this is not something that you should be panicked by. If you are a believer in the Cardano project, if you're here for the long run, I think that this is nothing more than an opportunity that's presenting itself. So let me know what you guys think. I know we talked about quite a bit here in this video, quite a long-winded video, but I hope you did find some value from it. If you did, please be sure to drop a like for me before you go, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care.